Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Curse of Monkey Island. In the last episode we met the voodoo lady from the two previous games, and she told us how we can lift the curse from a lane. And according to her, we need to find another ring. A ring of equal value to the cursed one Elaine is wearing right now. Not only in the monetary value, but also in emotional value as well. And according to the voodoo lady, there is one such a ring on Blood Island. But we can't get there yet because we are lacking three things. The map, a ship and a crew. Three very simple things. But of course, getting those, getting those three simple things is not going to be that easy or simple because, well, this is a point and click adventure game, so of course it's going to be hard and difficult and complicated and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what we need to do in, in, in order to li lift the curse from the love of, love of our life. So now, without further ado, let's, let's continue with the rest of the game. So, right now we are right outside of Brimstone Beach Club's uh, beach right here, which we can't get to yet because we don't have the membership card. But I'm just gonna show it to you. You can't go in there. That's for members only. Yeah, so we can't get there uh, without the membership card. But if my memory serves me correctly, there are there is at least one or two items we can pick up from here without even without the membership card. But we'll see. So what do we have here? We have a bus card. It's full of dirty dishes. Mm-hmm. Then we have. Ice bucket. It's an ice bucket for a bottle of sparkling grog. Mm, towels. It's full of dirty towels. Good. Can we uh, pick up pick up one of those? Those towels are for members only. Oh damn it! So we can't pick up even towels without the membership card. <laughs> Weenie roaster. That sounds. That sounds so bad. That sounds so wrong. So wrong. Weenie roaster. That's not so wrong. Then there's cooking oil. It's coconut cooking oil. Can we pick up that? May I please have some of your oil? That oil is solely for the use of the fry station technician. Fry station technician, huh? Oh yeah, now I think I remember, I think I remember now. We can't get the cooking oil even if we had the membership card. The only way to get this cooking oil is is, is to sim is to simply get is by simply getting rid of this guy here. And and in order to get and in order to get rid of this guy, we uh, we need access to the ice bucket and towels. And for that we need the membership card apparently. Well, sounds like I was wrong. So we can't really pick up anything here without the membership card. Well, god damn it. Well, since we are here, might as well have a little chat with this guy and see what he's all about. Yes, may I help you? Hmm. We got the classic option here. I have just been a rosin pirate battle. Mind if I towel off? Hmm. Something smells cooked. Well, uh, let let uh, let's start with the classic option here. My name is Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm a mighty pirate. Threepwood, you must be Seersucker Skip Rackham's cousin. How are Muffy and the twins? Uh, who? Hey, it's a lovely afternoon for the beach today. Not too crowded yet. There's a crafts workshop on the south beach, and a swabber size class at two and four. Water's warm, and the waves aren't too high. Just watch out for the occasional undead corpse washing up on shore. Yeah. Might want to keep the kids away from any rotting flesh. But otherwise, the siege early today shouldn't spoil your afternoon. Just between you and me, the undead are notoriously bad tippers. So it's just as well they didn't take over the island, eh? <laughs> Let me see your membership card and we'll fix you right up. Membership card, but I'm wearing my membership t-shirt. I'm developing these fine leather monocraft golf jackets. Hmm. I like this option better. I'm delivering these fine leather monogrammed golf jackets. No membership card, I see. Well, sir, you're at the Brimstone Beach Country Club in Smorgie, part of the Leisure Lovers Planned Community for Retired Pirates. It's very exclusive. I'm afraid if you don't have a membership card, you cannot use any of the club's amenities. I don't want an amenity. I had to eat one of those while I was lost at sea, and it was terrible. Then let me also point out that without that membership card, you are not permitted on the beach, you cannot use any of our towels, and you can't have anything from the grill. Good day. All right, well, he sounds like a dick. Let's talk to him some more, to this 
Cabana boy. Hi. Yes. So. Well, well, well let's let, let's uh, ask him for the towel and cooking oil for starters. It's not going to work, obviously, but I just want to hear what he has to say. Hand me a towel, young man. Those towels are for club members only. How about a towel? I know the secret handshake. Ever since Thurston the Hook Eddington joined last year, the <laughs> whole secret handshake thing just got kind of messy. We don't have one anymore. But of course, all members know that. Well, yeah, try, trying to handshake a hook doesn't usually end up well. So, yeah, that's understandable. It's me, Bip, from the polo team. My pony's about to give birth. Quick, boil some water and get me lots and lots of towels. Not buying it, Mr. Mangy Pirate. The only way you can have a towel is if you are a member of the club. Uh, please, can I have a towel? The only way you can have a towel is if you are a member of the club. Well, fine, fine, cheap cake. What about cooking oil? Let me have some of that cooking oil. That oil is only for French frying. It stays right here. Hey, what a coincidence. I'm French. Toss <laughs> that baby right over here. You don't sound French, and you don't look French. And you don't know how much you're getting on my nerves. And you don't know how much you are getting on my nerves here, sir. Onion ring emergency. Give me all the oil you've got. Sorry. As long as I'm in charge here, you'll get no handouts. Yeah, for as long as you are standing there. Please pass the cooking oil. No can do. I'm not authorized to hand out cooking supplies to anyone. Mm hmm. Well, well, what if I want to uh, want to join the club? I was thinking of joining a club for snotty rich folks. Where do I sign? Well, it's not that easy. First, you'll have to get on our waiting list. That could take several months. Then there's the credit check, references, family history, the oral presentation, and the written test. Mostly dealing with Spanish treasure, pillaging and golfing in the greater Caribbean area. And then finally, our 14-step interviewing process. And then I'll be in your club? No, I'm afraid after that I'd have to blackball. Well, goddamn. Joining this cl club sounds like a huge pain in the ass. What if I just washed up a bit? Then could I join your club? It's nothing personal, but club policy states that I have to exclude anyone whose odor or presence might disgust or offend the other members. I'm sure you understand. Actually, no, I don't, I don't understand. How about you enlighten me some more? Please, can I join your club? There is no way this club would accept you. Sorry. Sorry. Dick. All right, all right. Let's get going. Gotta be going. All right. So there's nothing we can do here after all. So coming here was a waste of time, basically. Yeah, because I, I, I really thought that we could have picked at least one or two items here, even without the membership card. But apparently not. All right. Um. Now where, where to go? Where haven't we been yet? Well, there's this one barber shop in Puerto Pollo where we haven't been yet, so I guess we could go there and... Oh! Oh yeah, I just remembered. Uh, one of my viewers uh, men uh, mentioned in the, in the comment section mentioned that there are there is two uh, easter eggs in this... Uh, in the starting area here, at the fort. Well, he, he, he mentioned that the first easter egg is that every time when we come back here, uh, one more feral chick is... is is gonna appear here, and I think that the maximum maximum amount of uh, feral chick uh, feral chickens in this area can is twenty. But holy crap, there's actually quite too many. One, two, three, four, five, and there's a, and there's six here. Have I re have I really come and come back here that many times? And no, I I know I, I haven't been playing this game off screen or anything. Weird. Well, whatever the case, may, uh, may, maybe maybe at some maybe at some point we, we we can recount and check whether whether there's 20 chickens here in total. But anyway, then the other Easter egg is at this bridge, and I actually had this vague m memory of uh, doing something doing something with the bridge when I was a little kid, but I don't remember what it was exactly. So let's see, what do we have? Oh, a secret button. Hmm. 
Well, use it. Oh. Fun. Fun. All right, so that was that secret. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I was expecting something a little more, well, something more, basically. But yeah, that, and this is the second uh, easter egg in this area. Nothing too impressive, but it's there. Alright, so, that was that. So now, let's go back to Puerto Pollo, and we might as well go to the barber shop, and see what we can do there. And it's this place. The Barbary Coast. All right, let's go in. Welcome, patron, to the Barbary Coast, where every haircut is an adventure. Aye, and if you're wanting a haircut, you'll have to wait until I'm finished with Captain Rottingham here. Are you guys pirate barbers? We prefer the term buccaneer hairstylists. Great! Maybe you guys can help me find this huge diamond ring I'm looking for. Diamond ring? Yeah, it's supposedly enormous, and it's on Blood Island. Blood Island? Never heard of it. It's a funny story, really. I needed to lift this curse that's turned my girlfriend into a solid gold statue. Solid gold? Wait a second, did I just share too much? Well, yes, you did, but <laughs> it looks like nobody really cares or believes you, Guybrush. Ah, uh, poor Guybrush. So anyway, these three pirates here, uh, this, this, and this one, these three are are, are supposed to join so join our crew in this uh, le in in this game. So we have to recruit them, rec recruit them one by one. But of course, the, but of course, the, uh, the, there's going to be a simple trial um, for e each and every one of these three. So yeah, these are the pirates that, that we need to recruit. But now we also need to get rid of this Captain Rot Rottingham here because we also we also need to get a haircut. So let's try to get rid of him. And I actually do know how to get uh, rid of him. But before we do that, I want to have a little chat with him so we can uh, get to know this character a bit more. He seems irritable. Well, let's talk to him then. Hmm. Should we sh should we go with the classic greeting or? Now let's let's go with the classic greeting. It's only polite. Ahoy there! I'm Guybrush Threepwood. I see, and I don't care. And I'm a mighty pirate. I'm a mighty pirate. Ha! What do you mean, ha? I mean just what I say. Ha! If you are a mighty pirate, then I'm bald. Well, that, well, that that could be arranged, sir. I'm mighty enough to defeat LeChuck twice. LeChuck? Ha! Ah, even if he's dead, there's just no excuse for that hair. <laughs> Wait, does he even have a hair? He has a big beard, but I don't remember him having hair. Well, whatever. So you're a ship captain, huh? Not just any ship captain. Don't tell me you've never heard of Captain Rene Rottingham. I've never heard of Captain Rodney. I'm only the most cunning and well-groomed captain ever to say the Caribbean. Uh-huh. Well, how'd you like to join my crew? Me? Serve on your crew? Please don't make me break into hysterical laughter while this buffoon is working on my hair. Uh, I don't think you want to call your barber, especially a big barber like that, a buffoon right in front of him. I don't think that's uh, usually a good idea. Why don't you want to join my crew? I serve under no man. Oh boy. Now just one second. If there's any treasure to be found, I'm going to be the man to find it. And I'll look absolutely stunning while I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Uh, excuse me, folks. Alright, folks, uh, sorry about that. I had to cough, so I, so I uh, turned off the mic there for a moment there. But anyway, uh, let's continue. Where were we? Well, I didn't want you on my crew anyway. That's your loss. And boy, lose the ponytail. It's so last year. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like that ponytail. Did you know you're starting to go gray? I most certainly am not. Uh, don't get me wrong. Gray hair suits you. It doesn't. I mean, of course it would. But uh, I don't have to worry about that for several years. If I were you... I'd worry more about those split ends. Split ends? 
I'll have you know I've killed men for comments less slanderous than that. You've got a bald spot starting here in the back. Bald? You're lying, of course. If you say so. All I know is that there's definitely some kind of shine going on back here. Well, at least we know that Captain Rottingham is very obsessed with his hair. It would be such a shame if something happened to it. You seem irritable. Is it from your dry scalp? My scalp is lovingly massaged with the finest creams and oils in the world, twice daily. Yeah, that's a little more than I wanted to know. Your petty jobs and insults mean nothing to me. Yeah, he's obsessed, all right. They're doing great things with dandruff shampoo these days. I suggest you leave, boy, before you force me to defend my honor. Fire! Run for your life! I'm sure the authorities probably have the situation under control. But just in case, Baba, more moisturizer. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that uh, that that more moisturizer is going to save your hair from fi fire, dude. Rabbit dogs are on the loose. Get out now! I don't hear anything. There are no rabbit dogs on the loose. That's just what they want you to think. Yeah, they're very uh, smart rabbit dogs. There's an axe-wielding maniac at the door. Flee! Perhaps you should offer yourself as a sacrifice so the rest of us may be saved. <laughs> the calls are coming from within the barbershop. You must get out immediately. I have no idea what you're talking about. Leave us alone. Storms are coming. Better get a move on. Could be a twister. Then I'm most definitely staying inside. The humidity does horrible things to my hair. Yeah, of course. Captain Rottingham, you're being paged. Take a message. You know, sitting down for too long can be unhealthy. It's a serious risk to your cardiovascular system. I think a nice jog could be just what you need right about now. Up and at him. Go away. That was actually a very good advice uh, advice from, from you, Guybrush. We, 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 we really shouldn't add, add, sit, sit at our computers for too, for too long on a daily basis. <coughs> Excuse me. That's not good for your health, so... Yeah, we, we, so we should follow Guybrush's advice more often. I should follow Guybrush's ad, ad, advice more often. Uh, didn't we say this already? You know, sitting down for too long can be unhealthy. That's a risk I just have to take. You know, sitting down for too long can be unhealthy. That's a risk I just have to take. All right, it, it, it's just going to be the same uh, shit all over, all over again. So, uh, let's just leave for now. You seem busy. I'll come back later. All right. So he, so he's not will, willing to li uh, leave his chair. So we have to force him to leave. And how how are we gonna do that? Well, we are, we're gonna need these lies we picked up in the last episode, and then put it on this comp. Holy infestation! You've been struck with the hair demons. What are you talking about? The cursed head vermin, the scourge of every hygienic sailor on the seven seas. That's a lie! Sure as I'm standing here, they're wriggling about your scalp like a pack of wretched sea lions. Good analogy. <laughs> this calls yeah. for drastic action. I'm bringing in old Ironsides. No, no, let's not be too rash. Rash? That's a bad sign. There's no time to lose. I'm going to have to amputate. No, no, you'll ruin my hair! Damn. <laughs> That was a clean cut. Made him bald with just one swing. <coughs> Ex uh, excuse me there. So so anyway, yeah. Now Rottingham is gone, and and we and now we and, and now we can get to get our own uh, uh, haircut here. He looks like a true professional. Indeed, he does. With a skirt. Ahoy there! I'm Guybrush Threepwood here to serve all your mighty pirate needs. Pleasure to meet you, Guybrush. I am Haggis McMutton of the Clan McMutton. Oh yeah, I I, I also I also just just remember that the voice the voice actor who is voice acting this guy is also the same voice actor who voiced uh, what was he called in English? Uh, Scrooge McDuck in Ducktales. Yeah, that that that's what that's what it was called. So yeah, that's uh, that that that's just a funny little fact for you there. So yeah, anyway, what? Hmm. Well, let's take the haircut first. I sure could use a haircut. 
Have a seat, laddie, and I'll do you up with a fine quaff. All right, so now... So now we're getting our hair cut. But now we also need to get this uh, uh, Mac Hackis McMutton to leave because we need these scissors from from up, from up there. Wow, I bet those could cut through anything. <laughs> yup, exactly. And we and, and we need those scissors. But indeed, we, we we need to make this guy leave first. And the way how, <coughs> excuse me, I feel so coffee these days. Uh, today even. All right, so. Mm, so we need to get rid of this guy, and, and in order to do that, we need we need to kick off this uh, paperweight. I can't reach it. Oh, I'm yeah. too low. Oh, you're too low. All right. So we ha so we have to so so we have to use this handle. How about now? Yep. Ugh, blast that ineffectual paperweight. I'll have to go find another. But what about my haircut? Keep your skirt on, lad. Skirt. <laughs> Alright, so now we now that he's gone, we can take those scissors from the roof. Or ceiling. Damn, this uh, that th this chair can can can, be, can become very tall. Alright, so now pick those scissors. Phew. Well, I searched the whole island well, that was and I fast. couldn't find a single rock for a paperweight. I suppose I'll just have to eyeball your haircut. I just remembered I have another appointment. Oh, I was going to give you a French braid too. Well, I, I, I would have kind of w wanted to see that. But you really searched the entire island in that so short amount of time and couldn't find even one single paper stone, stone or rock for paperweight? I don't believe you. Well let's, well, let's talk to this guy some more. How did you become a barber pirate? I spent ten years at sea on board the HMS Anathema, the fastest ship in the Scottish Navy. So how did that help you become a barber pirate? It was a clipper ship. Ah. Uh. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Do you know any arousing pirate stories? Well, there is the story of the secret of Bulky Island. We were a crew of two score men under the command of Big Jake McJuggernaut, the most powerful captain on the seas. One night in port, Captain Jake heard the tale of an enormous treasure buried somewhere on Bulky Island. We set sail and landed on the island within a fortnight and found the treasure the next morning. Bulky Island, huh? Bulky Island? Where's that? You won't find it on any map. Captain Jake took the location of the treasure to his grave. Oh, it was a beautiful sight. A tremendous chest made of solid gold. Big Jake leapt into the hole and wrapped his sinewy arms around the chest. He gathered his resolve counted to three, filled his lungs, and lifted with all his might. The sound of his back cracking brought a grimace to even the most oh, steel-hearted crewman. By nightfall, the lot of us were lying on the beach, writhing in pain. <laughs> all right. Why didn't you lift with your knees? That would have been the weak man's way out. The <laughs> pirate Angus McFolkham had followed us to Bulky Island, wanting the treasure for himself. The weakling used a lever and took the chest, laughing at us as he carried it to his ship. And my proud Captain McJuggernaut died in traction, cussing himself for not being strong enough. <laughs> well, that sounds very uh, tragic. Hmm. Haggis. That's an unusual name. I suppose it is. But Haggis is just a nickname. The given name is heart, liver, and kidneys boiled in the stomach of the animal McMutton. <laughs> oh, so your parents were expecting a girl. Yay. <laughs> All right. That's one he that's one hell of a name to uh, to give to someone. What is that blue stuff in the jar anyway? Ah, the old comb juice. It is a fiery brew that's bested many a sailor with her fermented froth. It'll burn your throat 
unless you chase it with conditioner. All right. So now, enough with enough with chit chat. How would you like to join my crew? You seem like a nice enough sort, Guybrush. But a man cannot serve as my captain unless he earns me respect. And how would a man go about doing that? By besting me in a time-honored test of strength. Test of strength. Uh, wrist wrestling. Australian rules football. The 500 meter pocket full of, full of heavy rocks relay. <laughs> Helping you move. And in your face, no hold sparrow cage match to the death. How about the t test of who can hold his breath for, for the longest? <laughs> Hmm, which do I like the best? Let's go with this. Helping you move? Oh, could you? I just have a bed and a few boxes of books. I, I was just kidding. Was that really the test of strength? No, I'm talking about the traditional Highland display of strength and virility. The caber toss. Uh-huh. <coughs> hmm. Hazing ritual? So what is it exactly? What in the world is a caber? The caber is a large tree trunk. We go to the field of competition and each of us heaves the caber as far as he can. The man whose caber goes the farthest is the winner. That's just about the stupidest sport I've ever heard of. When I watch cable television. <laughs> Aye, but you cannot argue with tradition. Alright, so... Well, l let's go and do it. We can't obviously do, do it just yet, but might as well show it to you. Sounds great. Let's do it. <laughs> I would never follow such a weak captain. Ah, sh what a shame, guy, Brush. You're not strong enough. So yeah, we can't do that just yet. There's something that we need to do before that, but... That comes later. Now, I was thinking that maybe for the rest of this episode, uh, we can also chat to this pirate. And if I'm not mistaken, we can all we can already recruit this guy almost uh, pretty much pretty much straight away. So, before we talk to this dapper pirate, let's talk to this salty pirate here. <laughs> salty. It's a salty pirate sucking on some candy. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's salmiaki. Or, or or salt licorice. We Finns love uh, love our salt licorice. Ahoy there! I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. So, so it's good to meet you, Mister Bill. Bill, that's your pirate name, Bill. Cutthroat Bill. Oh, I see. Well, that puts a whole new spin on it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, indeed. Hmm. Are you ever going back to pirating? How would, you, how would you break into the hairstyle industry? Well, let's ask this first. How'd you break into the hairstyling industry? I saw an ad to join a barbershop quartet. Got a problem with that? No, that must be very rewarding work. What's that supposed to mean? Mean? Well, just that, you know, cutting hair and um, singing must be just a lot of fun. It's like a party every day. Some days I just don't know how to contain my joy. I get giddy and the laughter bubbles out of me like a sparkling fountain of mirth and gaiety. Okay, new topic. Oh, oh yeah, new topic. And pirate stories. Pirate stories. Got any? Okay, here's a story. I started out as a crewman on the raging tightwad, sailing out of Puerto Pollo. The captain was a master treasure hunter, a diviner from some ancient secret society. He had some weird fifth sense when it came to finding objects of value. Is this going to be scary? Because I warn you, I've been known to leap into the arms of total strangers when startled. I have a razor. Good point. <laughs> Please go on. We left port without a map, guided only by the captain's keen senses. We spent the first week going around in circles, until we realized the crew's gold earrings were throwing the captain off. After we <laughs> tossed all our jewelry, gold coins, and belt buckles overboard, we got back on course. 
All right. How long is this story anyway? Long enough. Shut your hole. Will do. We sailed for two years, and had finally started back to Plunder Island. But just as we started to doubt him, he paid off. We found sunken treasure right off the coast. Wait a second. Was it an enormous pile of jewelry and gold coins and belt buckles at the bottom of the bay? Exactly. How did you know that? <laughs> I just had a feeling. Oh man. I wonder. I wonder if they even realized it. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, I guess they didn't. Hmm. Any more stories? Do you know any more pirate stories? Want the story about how I slit the throat of the annoying little pirate who kept asking me questions? Is something troubling you? <laughs> oh god, Prussia, you're so oblivious sometimes. So, are you really eating some salty licorice there? Say, uh, what you eating there? Jawbreaker. Is it good? Yep. You don't say much, do you? Nope. Well, w well, he said, well, he said quite a bit when he was telling his story, though. Mm. That's a really good jawbreaker there, huh? Yep. Well, I didn't want well, to. Well, that's just terrific, isn't it? Yep. Well, I didn't want to say that. I wanted to ask this. Do you really enjoy being a barber? It's a steady income. All right. Well, let's go to the point. Are you ever going back to pirating? Maybe someday. If I find the right captain. Perfect. I'll be your captain. Onward to Blood Island and high adventure. Wanna come? You a captain? Hardly. Nobody ever takes Skybrush ser seriously. Hmm. I defeated the Chuck. Swordmaster. I discovered the treasure of Big Whoop. What was the treasure of Big Whoop exactly? Ah, whatever. I score excessively high on standardized tests. I can hold my breath for ten minutes. Hmm. Let's uh, let's say this. I'm the mighty pirate who defeated LeChuck. And what do you have to show for it? I've got a ton of cool stories. Treasure, immense mounds of gold and diamonds, solid gold scepters of power. Anything? Well, I've got these nickels. Wooden. Uh, yeah. Some treasure hunter you are. You couldn't find gold in a jewelry shop. Well, we also got our uh, solid gold statue Elaine. Oh wait, no. <laughs> that, that those other pirates I stole her. Well, goddamn. Hmm. I bet I could too. You big old wet wedding duty head. Don't know if you want to say that. Uh, let's say that anyway. I bet I could too, you big old bedwetting duty head. How much would you bet? Well, I've got these nickels. Right. Come back when you have some real treasure to show me. All right. So, uh, so in order, so in order to get to get this guy to join our crew, we need we need to find some gold to show him. Are you sure you don't want to join my crew? You still haven't proven you can find anything of value. Come back when you have some real treasure to show me. Yeah. So that's what so that's what we have to do, and I guess that was it. It's been a pleasure. Bye. So yeah, we need so so we need so we need to find some gold for this guy. And then lastly lastly this fellow here. It's a dapper pirate. Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. Of course you are! Okay then, who are you? Edward Van Helgen. Not the. That's right. Mine is the name that pirates fear the most. Edward Snugglecakes Van Helgen. <laughs> Dude. Snugglecakes. Hmm. How went from pirating to hairsty hairstyling? Well, yeah. Let's let's ask this. You went from pirating to hairstyling. Why? The music of the sea is something that takes hold of your soul and never lets go. But the life of a sailor is a rough one, and the sea shows no mercy. It was no easy choice to leave, but I realized that I could still enjoy the music of the sea while remaining safely on land. Mm -hmm. uh, true. Affo affordably priced sea shanty compilation albums. 
or hanging out at the docks and singing to passing sailors? By hanging out at the docks and singing to passing sailors? No, believe me, that doesn't work. By starting a barbershop quartet, obviously. Obviously, but there are only three of you. Auditions didn't go as well as we'd hoped. We once had a tenor named Dominique, but he left. Artistic differences. Mm-hmm, <laughs> so I see. My feet are killing me. Hmm. You still haven't explained why you chose hairstyling. Well, we spent so much time coming up with a clever name for the shop, we realized we were going to have to give up singing and actually become barbers. But I still like to think that we're not just cutting hair. That maybe, just maybe, we're teaching people a little bit about themselves. Well, that's some rather deep. Are you truly happy with this line of work? I may return to the sea one day. But for now, I'm happy helping pirates look their very best. At least until we find a fourth for our barbershop quartet. Well, I could join it. Uh, I could be the fourth for your barbershop quartet. Uh, no, no, uh, that's okay. I was wrong. We don't need one after all. Oh, come on, I really got away with a ballad. All right, then. Let's hear what you've got. Oh, my. There's a monkey in my pocket. Popular's children's song. I've got a friend in the ocean. Ocean. Mm, popular pirate shanty. Plunder on my hand. A popular Caribbean island anthem. Wooden lake. Restless heart. A popular romantic ballad. Silver. Silver. Silver's long chance. A popular commercial jingle. Mm. Let's uh, sing this. For those cold dark shipboard nights, we've got boxers, briefs, and tights made from cotton, silk, or satin in styles Anglo, Dutch, and Latin. When you sail, don't take a chance wearing nothing. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> Trust Silver's Long Johns. They breathe. Oh, my dear, sweet, merciful Savior in heaven. Pretty good, huh? You must take an oath now before man and God. That you will never ever again sing in public. <laughs> so what are you telling me exactly? He's telling you he's telling you that you suck, guy brush. That's what he's trying to tell you. Should we try again? Just for lo just for funsies. Let me try out for your barbershop quartet again. No! Oh please, please! The spirit of music is in me! Alright. But this is the last time. Of course it is. Hmm. So we, so, so we now got one option less here. So, should we go over a children's song, popular pirate shanty, Caribbean island anthem, or popular romantic ballad? Well, let's go with this. Popular chil children's song. Monkey in my pocket and he's stealing all my change. His stare is blank and glassy. I suspect that he's deranged. Great sainted jumping monkeys. What do you think, huh? That was even more atonal than last time. Well, all right. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. Hey, let me try out another song for your barbershop quartet. Am I just not getting through to you, Threefoot? Come on, this time will be great. Trust me. If you insist. Alright, and Blunder on my mind, Wooden Lake Restless Heart, I've got a friend in the ocean. Let's go with Romantic Ballad. I'm hooked on you, baby, but the seas keep us apart. And there ain't no eye patch big enough to cover up my broken heart. Mother of all that we as humans hold sacred. Well, you're actually beginning to make me physically ill. Please stop. Oh, that's harsh. Oh well, well, all right. Get, uh, get, guess, guess we can't join. Guess we can't join these pirates' uh, quartet or whatever, they, whatever he called it. So anyway, got any pirate stories? I bet you have a ton of cool pirate stories. No, I couldn't. Oh, come on, I'd really like to hear some of... The year was 1675. 
We were on a course towards the wreck of the rattling phlegm. Our days were filled with songs of the voyage and the untold riches we'd find at our destination. Two months into our journey, we realized something was horribly wrong. Was it some kind of seasickness? Had your ship been placed under some kind of pirate curse? Were you haunted by the spiteful ghost of a former captain? Is it going to be scary? Hmm. Was it some kind of seasickness? In a manner of speaking, we were all stricken with a melody. A diabolical song that I shall never forget. La 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 Hey, that's kind of catchy. Aye, all too catchy for a crew of 50 men confined to a ship hundreds of miles from port. No one could think of anything else, and many threw themselves into the sea rather than hear any more of the incessant humming. <laughs> we returned with but eight of our crew left. The doomed voyage of the Obsessivo Compulsivo will haunt me forever. Okay, that was a... Uh, that was tragic. Hmm. All right, well, I guess I guess all, all we can now ask is this. How would you like to join my crew? How would you like to join my ever-growing pirate crew? Your crew? Why would I want to be on your crew? It's gonna be a blast. We're going to Blood Island. Sorry, Threepwood. As much as I'd love to be out at sea again, I could never serve a captain who wasn't a gentleman and who wasn't my equal. Hmm. I'm at least two times your equal. Me equal. That doesn't make much sense. I'm I am a gentleman, you big old bet what in duty head. <laughs> I don't think that I don't think that a gentleman would say that. Gentlemen? That's me all over. Then prove it. If you can defeat me in a gentleman's duel, I'll join your crew. Alright, let's get to dueling. No no no, there are rules. If you want to duel with me, you have to give me sufficient insults. Oh yeah. Mm, okay. Oh yeah, now 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 no, remember. All right, so we can't so we can't uh, uh, recruit this guy just yet, or even duel him, because we need a certain item of, uh, item to well use use to insult him. But anyway, let's continue and see what we can say here. That's a nice shirt. That's not exact, that's not exactly an insult insult, unless you're planning to say something very mean after that. Hmm. How appropriate! You fight like a cow! <laughs> yeah, let's say this. How appropriate! You fight like a cow! That's an old one. Come back when you have some fresher material, eh? Well, alright, what, what about this one? Hey, that's a nice shirt. How long have you been colorblind? Oh, please. <laughs> nice cologne you're wearing. Did you actually roll around in dung or just dab a little behind each ear? That's not the type of insult I had in mind. What did what did you have in mind? What about this? Did I mention you're a big old bedwetting duty head? No, but I'm still not impressed. I don't want to insult you. Why can't we just get along? Yeah, why can't we just get along? All right, so I think we are done here. Whoa! Look at the time. Got to scoot. All right, so so yeah, so we need a certain item item to insult this guy, and I believe that it was a white glove of some kind. Hmm. Let's see. Did I miss? Did I miss a miss an item here? Behind the theater. Uh, was there white gloves here? Fake sword. It's a fake sword. And you can't take it, of course. I don't need a prop. Or you don't. Or you just don't need. Fake spears. Yeah, I don't think that there. I don't think that we can pick up any white gloves from here. I don't want to disturb the mystic powers of the hat. Well, all right, let's just leave this place then. All right, so yeah, we can't. So, so we can't recruit any of those three just yet. However, we did get something. We got we got these scissors, and oh, we got this paperweight too. All, all right. So, where do we use these scissors? Then you might ask. Well, I'm glad you asked. We are we are going to use these scissors here. To cut our way through to Danger Cove, I think was the place's name. So now we're gonna use the scissors on this uh, under undergrowth.
Oh, and I also picked a uh, flower. All right, and now, and now we can continue our way to Tenja Cove. Uh, what Kyvers, who are you? Oh, you are there. All right, so now we are here. I was actually planning to end, planning to end the episode here, but uh, hmm, should I just end, end here or should we continue a little further? Ah, uh, you know what? Let's continue a little bit further. Why the hell not? All right, so there's a sign. Hmm, I wonder what this sign means. Well, there's a big snake ass crossing. What possible harm could a snake? Oh hmm. shit! Well, crap. Well, this isn't good. Indeed, it isn't. All right, so actually, I think I'm going. To, I think that this. I think that this, this is a good, good place to end, end this epi episode here, when Guybrush, Guybrush is, is is inside a big ass uh, man-eating snake. Sound, sounds like a perf sounds like a um, sounds like a perf perfect time to end the episode. So, yeah, let's let's do that. So, thank you for watching once again, and see you next time for more The Curse of Monkey Island.